My name, Rahul, is Indian. My dad is Singaporean, but he was born in India. And my mom is Indian, but she was born in Bhutan. On a side note, she could have been a princess there, but that's besides the point. And while my brother and I are both American, he was born in New York, and I was born in Texas. I have two cousins who live in the States, two more who live in India, and many friends from both Singapore and all over the world. So I can truly say that I'm part of an international family. On United Nations Day, when I was seven, my brother and I sat in different sections. The day before, we had this big argument. He said that we should both sit in the US section because we were both born in the US. But I said that we should both sit in the India section because, well, our parents were both from India. He disagreed, so we sat in our different sections. But the next year, I sat in the US section because I didn't have a country to call my own. An American going to an American school seems pretty straightforward, but I still struggled to fit in. For the first almost year, I mainly hung out with the new kids, which sparked this real need to fit in. I've seen that need persist in and out of school. Over the summer, I went to the Grand Canyon, and as I was hiking down, I met another hiker who was hiking up. We got to talking, and I caught myself using a really strong American accent using terms like soccer instead of football. You know, all of this just to fit in with this person that I'd never met in my life and would probably never meet again. The same can be said about Singapore. If I meet a stranger, I use a more global British accent, using terms obviously like football instead of soccer. And in India, well, the pattern continues. So when somebody asks me, where are you from? What normally ends up happening is I say, Funny story about me, my dad is Singaporean, but he was born in India, blah, 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 and most people are a bit uh, confused. And I realized it wasn't the best answer to their question or mine, so I asked my parents, where did they feel at home? My dad said it was India, the place that he was born, and now it would be Singapore, the place that he lives. But my mom said that even though she wasn't born there, she would say her home was India, because she created so many memories there that it became home to her. Armed with these two different answers, I had to figure it out on my own. And that is what all children should be able to do. They should be able to figure it out, because even though your parents make a lot of decisions for you when you're younger, it isn't their job to put you in the box that they envisioned for you. It isn't your own job to put yourself into the mold that somebody else has envisioned for you. No, it's your job to take the platform and the opportunities that you've been given by your parents and your peers and create your own identity around that. For me, this was a bit complicated because I was born in the States, grew up surrounded by Americans, but my parents, my grandparents, my blood is Indian. To top it all off, I live in Singapore, a tiny island in Asia that some people think is the capital of China. It isn't. The point is, to figure out where I belonged, I had to lay out all the facts in front of me. I've lived in Singapore for a long time, and a byproduct of that is memories. Singapore has created so many memories for me, and it's not just that. It's also subtly the changed the way I perceive normal, what's familiar to me and what's comfortable to me. A few years ago, I was at the field at my school, and the teacher asked the entire class to name a few things that they heard and not one person said cars or traffic, which is very surprising because our school field is at the intersection of two major highways. The constant hum of traffic has become so routine for me that without it, something will always feel off. Over the summer, I went to the United States, the West. It's very remote, and it took me an extra 30 minutes to fall asleep because my lullaby, the traffic, was missing. <laughs> Most places I go in Singapore, I have memories of doing something there, too. If I go past Boogies, I think to myself, that's the place that I did Taekwondo when I was little. Or when I go past Fort Canning, I think to myself, that's the place that my best friend had his seventh birthday. And that is the most important part about finding home. It combines people with places and adds memories into the mix. Belonging is also the hardest part about finding home. Because, yeah, I felt like I belonged with, at, with the people at my school and at my school, but did I feel like I belonged outside of my little bubble? In my everyday life, I don't get to interact with many local Singaporeans, so how was I supposed to find the people that I connected with? 
Even though I didn't know it then, three and a half years ago, I was given this amazing opportunity. Though I was kicking, screaming, and admittedly crying, I went to this free drama workshop that my parents forced me to go to. I still go there, and I do stay because I love theater, but I stayed because of these amazing, wonderful people that I met. At the beginning of the week, I had no idea who any of them were, but by the end of it, I was able to share my fears with them. I was able to make a fool of myself in front of them. And that is the most important part about finding home. Yes, I felt like I found, I found people who resonated with me, and I found people that I resonated with. We can see from all of these examples that home isn't just a place. It's memories and people, it's a story. It's my parents, it's my brother, it's my cousins, it's that one drama workshop I told you about. I'm still 15, so I'm still on this journey, I'm still figuring things out. But don't ask me where my home is, because it's not just a place. Instead, ask me, what's my story? Thank you.